everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. It's day two of our adventure on the Disney Wish, Disney's newest and biggest cruise ship. And today we're getting a tour of the Kids Club on board the ship where youngsters can design and ride their own Disney Parks ride in the Imagineering Lab and even enter the world of Star Wars in Cargo Bay. We'll try some desserts at Joyful Sweets, an inside out inspired bakery and ice cream shop, and we'll drink some concoctions from around the Star Wars galaxy and hyperspace lounge. So why don't you come with us on, on this, this adventure? Our magnets for the door. Because the big thing on Disney cruises and all cruises is you decorate your door. And we actually had these made before we started a YouTube channel on our very first cruise, which happened to be a Disney cruise. And I remember to bring them on this one. So Peter is Chewbacca. See, it says Peter right there. And I, of course, am Ray. Of course. So this morning we're doing some press stuff. We're getting a tour of the Oceaneers Club, which is the kids' club. Oh, look at this, the walkway to Oceaneers Club is all marbled oh, out. This is officially awesome. So on every Disney cruise, they always do have open house if you're not like a kid and you're interested in seeing it. So I would check the cruise app and see when the open house is because I guarantee this is going to be something worth checking out. Yeah. Oh my God. Star Wars. Uh, what a cute photo op this would be. I want to get my photo here when we're done. Yeah. Look at this one. <laughs> I like how the porks have taken over. Dio! Why is Dio there but not BD8? What the heck? <laughs> oh my god! Look at this! All the creatures! Alright, found BD8. <laughs> These are like all the creatures that you could buy in the creature stall in that too. Yeah. Wow. Look. It's on C3PO's shoulder. Dinoga. Look, there's even uh, the child's, is that the child's pram down there? Oh, it might be. Maybe. This Oceaneers Club is different than all the other Disney ships because if you're a kid and you're up in the Grand Hall, you can actually take a slide and go down the rabbit hole straight to the Oceaneers Club. And I think on the open house, if you ask them, adult, you could try it if you're an adult too. Yeah, it's the only time adults can do it. Yeah. <sighs> Hello fellow kids, it is me. <laughs> and if you're boring, you can take the stairs down. But why would you want to? Right now we are in the hub, and this is where a lot of events happen here. And it's interesting, Animator's Palette is not here, but it kind of lives on in the hub here with these sketches coming to life and the wallpaper. The Oceaneer Club is for kids aged 3 to 12. It's this gigantic place where you just come, have fun, and you could even learn here. They have this new edition called the Imagineering Lab, where you actually get to learn stuff that Imagineers do, which I want. I wish they would do that for adults. Like, I want to know everything. I want to learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah. This is so amazing. Looks like the kids get their own Imagineering hats. They might get to... 3D print some stuff. There's lots of books, stuff for inspiration, and here's like the work area where they get to create their own imaginary creations. This illusion reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland, where there's nothing there and then you keep going and something appears. Magic. Magic. I think my favorite part is all these displays from Imagineer and history, some of the technology, some of the models, the ride vehicles. It's cool to see it all. So right here, I guess they, they can build their own rides. They tap their magic bands, and then you get to sit in the vehicle and actually experience the ride that they create. Oh my god, that's, that's so cool. The question is, what kind of ride would you design? Mine would be like similar to Living with the Land, where we don't really, there's no thrills. You just... <laughs> You just go on a slow boat ride through nature. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's even an option. I love that they have clocks for all the Disney theme park times. And right below it, they have a skill model of the wish. How cool is that? I wonder if they use this in creating it. 
Looking at this model just makes me realize there's so much of the ship that we haven't seen yet still. I know. <laughs> I don't know what's over here, but it says prop shop. And they have a mini replica of the Hollywood Tower of Terror. Over at Mickey and Minnie's Captain's Deck. It's just a little, little fun play area for the younger kids. And over in Fairytale Hall is the place where the princesses hang out. Wow, this is epic. Bell's Library. We have... What is this from? Tangle? Yeah, Tangle. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you know she loves to, to paint and stuff. Oh my god, I found Pascal. And over here they have Arendelle. This looks like you can play some fun games on the TV. One thing that I guess I didn't realize but makes sense is they have their own bathroom here. And each of the stalls is themed after one of the famous like Pixar characters. Yeah, they're all Pixar characters. Can you guess them all? Can I name them all? Yes. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like inside. There's no one's in here. Oh, each one is colored based on the character outside. That's yellow, Miguel. Yeah. Cool detail is all the doors have Luxo balls above them. And when you're inside, they lit up to indicate that the stall is taken. This is amazing. Galactic Star Cruiser who? Galactic Star Cruiser what? This is so much cooler than I was anticipating. There's so many creatures in here. Oh, it's a wart. It's a wart. Listen to him. You can even see him breathing. So many creatures in here. Yeah, we've seen him in the creature stall. How you doing, buddy? He looks cooler with like actual stage lighting on him. Yeah. He's having a good time. Oh, there's actually there's a low cat here. Why are they they're always sleeping? Whenever I whenever I see my low cats, they're always asleep. Never wake a sleeping low cat. Yeah. He's drinking blue and green milk. What do you think he likes better? Probably blue. Probably blue, yeah, you're right. A lot of the stuff is from Galaxy's Edge, so I think I know what's in here. Uh-oh. Oh! Here it comes! <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> oh, that's great. I know a lot of the stuff is from Galaxy's Edge and just repurposed, but that's cool. There's something that feels so good about activating it with a little lever. Yeah. What are the security monitors over here looking at? Yeah, if you want to practice for Smuggler's Run, flip all the, the knobs and push all the buttons. Now's your chance. <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of game here. Oh, over here is like a mini Droid Depot. There's like little droid parts. There's all skewed up here. Huh. The moment you've been waiting for this entire time. This is the thing I was most excited to see. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Look at him! Oh, Look at his teeth! Shh. Looks so much like Pixel! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry! We're being too loud, we're disturbing him. Did you see he has a nest? Yeah. It's a mother. Don't worry, we're not going to eat you. Chewbacca is not going to eat you. You're safe with us. <laughs> wow. Can I just hang out here all day? All night? Can we please get these in Smuggler's Run? Put them in the queue. Can I please? Do you think if I just like take this like home with me as my luggage, anyone will notice? I don't... Totally. They totally won't notice. Do you think our dogs will get jealous? Yes. I don't know what kind of creatures in here. There's a tag here, but it looks like it's from a planet that I can't read the language from. But I just heard some noises coming from the inside. Oh, interesting. It looks like they have a crate here from an operation I saw happening on Batu that one time. Right here, it makes R2D2 scroll across the screen. Oh, that's cool. Where are we looking into right now? So, um, that's an excellent question. Um, it, it, this is one of the screens that we see right here. So we have these four, 
And then these two buttons down here, so it's these two buttons up here, when you press them, it activates a zoom in feature. So we're able to look in on the extra spots of the ship. Uh, during the program that comes on in this room, we are more focused on this because a raft car gets loose on the ship that we're on. Oh. Yes. Um, so they got to capture the raft car? Yes, we use the force with uh, Ray. Uh, herself, as well as uh, Chewbacca, well, he's there for moral support. Beret helps teach us how to use the force to capture and maintain the raft car. So we shut a door here, shut a door here, shut a door here, and we force push it back into its cage. That's awesome. It is really, really cool. Really cool. It was just pointed out to me that right up there is a Borg nest, oh. and that, if you've ever wondered what Borg poop looks like... Is that you, like a blue tint to it? It's like a whitish, bluish color. Were they drinking some of the, the Los, Cap, Los, Los Cat's blue milk? So this cage right here has a Colossian monkey lizard in it. If you look at the tag, it explains that. And at one point during like the play session, they take it out and it's like puppeted and everything. Why don't they have an area like this for a dog? Me and you would be there the entire cruise, that's why. <laughs> We would never leave. Then over in the corner here, there's a table and some chairs. It looks almost like something from Millennium Falcon, but not quite. Star Wars Cargo Bay was a lot cooler than I thought it was going to be. Kind of makes me wish Hyperspace Lounge was a little bit more like grungy, original trilogy looking. Things don't need to be original trilogy. I, you know, Ray and Chewbacca are in Cargo Bay. I just want things to like not look all clean and like. Minimal. I want animatronics and stuff. Give us animatronics. Get anim the animatronics. <laughs> I was thinking of porgs and then animal and then animal animatronics. Animal animatronics. Give us animatronics. Come on. She's, give me a. She's get, drinking water. It's water, or is it? It's water. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> I really wish they had an adult area as themes like that to Star Wars. Disney, yeah. if you're building more ships, and I know you're building two more, give us an adult version of that. Oh, look at this oh mural. Oh my god, that's the photo right there. Where's Chip and Dale? Right uh, here! Okay, can you take my photo? Yeah. <laughs> There's your captains. So on deck five, you'll find Edge, which is the tween club. So 11 to 14. And here is a place to play games. There's video games. There's old-fashioned like card games and board games. There's crafts. Uh, there's lots of televisions. There's a place to get some soda. There's a. They have a smoothie bar. Smoothie bar. They actually had their private elevator that only people that are tween age can actually scan their their card and get up into the secret entrance into this club. But it looks so colorful. I love all the like artifacts laying around. It's just so well decorated. And as Kitra said, the Vinylmations are living on here at yeah. Edge. The Vinylmations never died. They're alive in Edge on the Wish. Yeah. <laughs> the next area that we're checking out is called Vibe and it's for ages 14 to 17. So teenagers. And it is by far the best air conditioned place in the entire ship. It is freezing <laughs> in here. It feels great. There's amazing views like views as far as the eye can see it's so colorful in here there's once again a bunch of tvs with video games and tables everywhere where you could play games there's a foosball table They're, they even have a freaking coffee machine so like if they wanted to make it come up here and make a cappuccino they could come up here and make a cappuccino i love that for them that's great <laughs> my favorite part is in the corner there's this mickey like graffiti on the wall that yeah. looks super cute I feel like all of these places that we've seen so far are just so well decorated. This one might be my favorite. And of course, Kitra's making me take her photo with it. I mean, some good photo ops. And now we'd like to thank Upside for sponsoring today's video. Upside is an app that allows you to get cash back when you go out to eat, when you go shopping, or you go get gas. It's simple. When you open up the app, it shows you qualifying restaurants, gas stations, and stores around you. You claim the offer, check in in the location, scan your receipt, and within days, you'll receive cash back. Today we're going out for lunch, but we're not going to pay full price. For lunch, we went to Veggie Grill, which is a fast food vegan restaurant in LA. All you have to do is check in when you arrive, order, enjoy your meal, 
and then scan your receipt at the end. Mmm, 17% cash back never tasted so good. <laughs> and it's just that easy. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card to Amazon or other brands. To get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or the Google Play Store. And use our code ORDINARY and you'll get five or more dollars off your first purchase of $10 or more. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. Don't miss out. Now, back to our video. Usually on Disney cruise ships, they have a basketball court outdoors. Well, they brought the sports court indoors, and it's cool because it's now a multi-use area. And right here, you see one of the uses. They have this Incredibles obstacle course, and this blow-up, insane, like, almost American Ninja Warrior-style <laughs> obstacle course. And if your question is, can I do it if I'm an adult? You can. They have open houses for adults, they have times for kids, they have times for teens. So I did ask about like weight limit and stuff. Apparently there is no weight limit, so don't be scared to go on this. Unfortunately, you know, I, I still have a hurt ankle. Um, you might remember the last cruise we were on, I actually broke my ankle in three places and I'm still recovering. So yeah. unfortunately I can't do it today. Yeah, I'm gonna sit out in solidarity. Yeah, and Peter, yeah, thank you, honey. That's very sweet of you. But it looks freaking fun, let me tell you. I can't even describe the smell in here. Look, it's me. <laughs> if I were a Pixar character. <laughs> Look, it's me. If I was a Pixar character. That's so true. That is our dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they have the posters for the movies, like, in her dreams. Remember Dream Productions? Yeah. Kitra. Yeah. I found Gizmo. <laughs> And, and look, there's Pixel. <laughs> wow, we're, the whole family's here. Inside Out Joyful Sweets is filled with desserts that you can purchase. They're not included with your cruise vacation. That includes 16 flavors of hand scooped ice cream. All of it looks really good. But do I need it if there's free soft serve on deck? I'm not sure. But I will tell you, the thing that does look good is the gelato. They have 20 different flavors. Some of them are like unicorn. And Bubble gum looks very tasty, especially if you're into like crazy flavors. And there's 32 different toppings to put on top. And they don't just have poultry, they also have like some cakes and stuff. These are Oreos? Yeah, these are Oreos. And then look at these the chocolate sphere. Oh, it's like the memory ball. And then I think on the end, those are dipped marshmallows. Oh my god. They got some colorful macarons. Yeah, I think my favorite thing here are these cupcakes though. They have the Captain Minnie and Mickey cupcakes, which are awesome looking, but then they also have the Inside Out characters, and it looks like they're memory orbs as well to accompany it. Oh, anger is red velvet. The problem is, is like there's so many different choices in here, and you know that we're paralyzed with indecision. <laughs> I love that they also have the memory orbs. Yeah. I guess they're all just chocolate. They look cool with that swirl. They do. And then they also have like, some popsicles with butterflies on them. Oh my god. In a carrot cake brownie. So many decisions. If only our friend Chris was here to try that out. If only. I decided to get one of the Inside Out cupcakes and I got my girl Sadness. She's blue and she apparently tastes like blueberries. I've never had a blueberry flavored cupcake before, so I was intrigued. I feel bad destroying this. <laughs> I know, it looks cool. As with most Disney like desserts, I always feel bad eating them. <laughs> I like the plate that it comes on. Yeah, too. this is very fun. I just want to try this first. Like, is this the blueberry part? Maybe. Is this frosting? What is this? It's like sugar. <laughs> this is insane. What is going on here? Why is it insane? Because it's like blue. The cupcake itself is blue. Yeah. I guess I wasn't expecting it. So this tastes basically like a blueberry muffin, except like extra sweet. So the blueberry itself is in the cake, and then the stuff on top I think is just vanilla or normal flavoring. But this is surprisingly good. It's very moist and it's dense. It's a thick, thick guy over here. And this probably gets like a four out of five. I think it's more like for novelty to like take a photo of it or whatever. But it was only what, like four dollars and fifty cents or something. So. For Disney prices, I feel like that's not bad for yeah. like a cool cupcake. 
But now, like, I want to try every flavor, so it might be a problem. Mm. So I decided to get one of those weird Oreo things. I got the Inger Oreo. I think it's covered in chocolate of some kind. Yeah. Let's see. There's milk chocolate on the outside. There's like a cake chocolate on the inside. And then there's an Oreo inside. But there's also dolce de leche, like caramel. This is... Are you happy you made that decision? You were going to get ice cream and then Peter saw the Oreos and he's like, no, I'm a connoisseur of Oreos. I need to get that. <laughs> that is true. Not messy at all. <laughs> five out of five, Peter. <laughs> oh my God. Some ladies sitting next to us actually ordered one of those chocolate memory orbs. I, I almost got one. And inside there's a bunch of different candies. Like you crack it open and there's a bunch of different candies. It almost I, looks like a, a chocolate bar. I asked them though, they say it isn't. Yeah, it's just like chocolate filled with more candy. You can't go wrong there, yes. Over in the corner, there's a machine that gives you memory spheres with randomly assorted characters inside. All right. Candy in a maze. Oh. One limited chaser. Turn me. Okay, you know I love a mystery. It looks like you could obviously get one of the inside out figures or a mystery, which I'm hoping is either Bing Bong or the unicorn. Oh, if it's Bing Bong, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Oh, I see. So you put the little candies in and then they go down. Yeah. It's like that marble thing. I used to have this for marbles when I was a kid and that was yeah, like my favorite. Who would I get? Oh, I got Pixel. What do you know? You got Pixel? Yeah. What is his name? Anxious? Scared? I forget. Here's what it looks like. You got fear. I got fear. It's kind of stylized, like it looks like him, but it's like even cuter. I really want sadness. Should I get another one? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We, we can't fill the, fit our bag with as many of these. I know, that's bolts. true. That's true. So you gotta play, try to get them to the hole. I'm not sure if you were supposed to do all of them. <laughs> I lost a few memory orbs along the way. Seems like a bad idea. Wait, who's orange? I don't remember an orange one. Oh. oh. Lost the sadness. I lost the sadness. <laughs> yeah, okay, I probably I shouldn't have put them all in at the same time. I think we should just eat them. Peter, you gotta play the game if you wanna eat them. <laughs> Tastes like sweet tarts. One of the places that we were most excited to see is the Hyperspace Lounge, which is a Star Wars bar. And it's kind of just like in this hole in the wall, you would never notice it. I saw it from a distance. I was like, oh, we gotta go in there. So I'm guessing eventually there's gonna be like a menu here. This reminds me of a Star Cruiser a little bit. Yeah. Data pad. Cocktails. 
Oh, so each of the cocktails is from a different planet. And then, of course, the $5,000 Kyber Crystal drink. I don't think we're going to be getting that one tonight, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I wish we could, but uh, not happening. So the reason why this is called Hyperspace Lounge is because every seven minutes we make you jump to hyperspace and out through these windows we get to overlook some famous planets in the Star Wars galaxy. And so far we've only gotten asteroids, but we, we haven't been here for seven minutes, so. Oh, wow. This is cool. You want an experience? <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you so much. Did you read that your drink is actually made with Bantha? Well, that makes sense. I love Bantha. That's true. They are pretty tasty. According to this menu, this is made of Bantha hides mashed with fer fermented grains, wood furred reserve double oats. It's almost like an old fashioned. Smoky old fashioned. When you drink it, like you're inhaling the smoke. This is an incredible experience. Even without how good this drink tastes, I'd be giving it five out of five Peters. So this drink is strong. If you like old fashions, get this. And, and if that, you like Banthas. <laughs> and if you like Banthas. If you like killing and drinking Banthas, I never thought I would say that, but I love this place. You know, I was a little disappointed when I came in here. It's smaller than Sublight Lounge. Only about 50 people fit in here. There isn't a lot of decor. But if all the drinks have that kind of presentation, oh my god. <laughs> They're in for trouble because people are going to be like lining around the ship to get in here. Oh my god, look. We are orbiting Batu, And if you know anything about Batu, then you know there's some Star Destroyers right above it. And actually, if you look closely, you can actually see that shuttle over there that we intercepted on the Halcyon. I, I love the details, the interconnected Disney Park Star Wars universe. The drink I ordered is called Birkin's Flow, and this is coconut, rum chata, Godiva chocolate, and coconut water. And it is like lined with space dust, space glitter. What is with all these Star Wars bars and like loving space dust? It's supposed to have like this thing printed on the top of it that like if you use UV light, it glows. Yeah, but unfortunately but the machine's broken. The machine's broken after like two weeks. So I ordered that because of that, but it actually sounds pretty good. So hopefully it's still tasty. <laughs> it's like coconut with a, like a very, very light hint of chocolate. It's almost like a chocolate milk, like a coconut chocolate milk or something. Oh, really? Very coconutty. I like this a lot. It's very creamy because of that rum chata. Oh. Where we're gonna go this time. Oh, we're jumping far. I can, I can feel it. Come on, Mustafar. Oh, I don't know. There's three. Where are we? I'm giving it a five out of five. I just noticed the chemist behind the bar were pouring another guest a drink. And they were using a strainer. And I noticed the strainer is in the shape of the Millennium Falcon. That's kind of cool. We just made another jump. I think we might be at Chandrilla. Because I notice, look at that, there's a Halcyon class starship right there. So 
decided to order one of the mocktails here because it's shaped like Baby Yoda. I'm not all evil, okay? This is called the Temple Twist, and it's apple, mint, pineapple, ginger beer, and kiwi. How cute is that? Ooh. Wow. This is surprisingly good. Check out this glass. It has like a bunch of bumps on it. I don't know, it feels really cool. Yeah, it's very sci-fi looking. Yeah. So this tastes like a good mix between the kiwi and the ginger beer. It almost tastes like it should be a cocktail. I guess maybe that's why they're called mocktails. But I'm really happy I got this. It's pleasantly refreshing after that really, you know, evil drink that I just tried. <laughs> and this probably gets like a four out of five for presentation. Add a shot of like vodka in it and then it would get a five out of five. And of course there's Star Destroyers outside of Mustafar. Of course. I like how all the bottles behind the bar are in like Star Wars logo fonts. Like there's no, you know, Jack Daniels. It's all like in theme. And they actually make the drinks here, if you haven't seen already. At Ogus Cantina, it's all pre-made. Here it's your feeling. We have finally gotten to Tatooine. The Razor Crest just flew by. And you missed it. <laughs> yeah, I missed it. Yeah. Well, he'll come to us soon enough because I've got his child here. <laughs> There's a few artifacts that are on display throughout the lounge. One of them is right near the door that you enter this lounge. And it's called a Hawk Bat. And it's from Curson. It's appeared in a lot of Legends material. It's only been mentioned in canon, in like books. And then there's also some crystals from Mustafar. They're not hyper crystals though. They are magma crystals. I'm gonna have to look that up. I don't, I'm gonna have to Wikipedia that one. I don't remember that. But the other thing interesting is they have an instrument from Tatooine that looks like the instrument that Sandro was using on the Star Cruiser. And then there's also a... And then they have this green bust of a Tagruda. I don't think it's a Soka. I think it's just one of her species. I'm wondering what the story is behind that. And then they also have like this hologram that shows, it's kind of like the thing in the Star Cruiser in the corner that shows like different like ships and stuff. And I think it shows you the ships that are outside the window that we're looking at. It's kind of cool. It's in like mini form. Now we're going to head over to a brand new venue that's called Luna, which is where they host all the trivia and game shows and that sort of stuff. And we're going to see our favorite game show, which is the Match Your Mate. It's kind of like the Newlywed game. It's but Disney 5. Disney 5, but it still gets a little... A little raunchy. It's, it's definitely adults only. Luna is a two-story entertainment venue. During the day, it's for families. At night, it's for adults. So this replaces like D Lounge and also like the Tube and venues like that. And the cool thing about this is it is two stories. I love that it's two stories because I'm a person who likes to watch the games, but I don't want to be called on or participate in any way. So like the people who sit up on the second level, they don't have to like go up on stage. So I love that. And I love that the backdrop is this two story screen that they can interchange like backdrops and clips and stuff like that. They, all, they have drinks here, and they also have some food. You gotta pay money for both. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if this venue is based off the Pixar short La Luna. It should be, but there's stars on the ceiling, the big stars. And it's, I don't know, I don't see any La Luna stuff. I think it's just like the moon. If we were to currently plant a parrot, let's say, in your bedroom, 
what would be the first thing, the first phrase that parrot would learn to say? So parrots are known to repeat what they hear. What is this parrot learning from the two of you? Turn off the lights. Forgot to take this off. That means no towel animal. But if you want to see all the videos in this series, we'll put the playlist right there. You don't want to miss any of them. We want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Eric Larson, Aaron Snyder, Aaron and Alan, and Boris Buling. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure. Night. I'm tired. I, know, I just realized there's like a neon light shining on my glasses. Like reflecting. <laughs> okay, good night. <laughs>